Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. I am once again taking a look at one of your designs that you have linked me in the comments section of one of my videos. And for today we're looking at another fairly large ship. And this one is called the Interplanetary Vessel Mark III or IPV for short. And it is this thing right here. Now this does contain a mod on there, it contains the upgradable thrusters, so all the thrusters you see on this ship will be from that mod pack. It has a few weapons on there, you can see there's rockets at the front there, it's got some Gatling guns, it's got some rocket turrets on there, and it's got some sensors for the automatic opening and closing of doors. It's just a nice little ship to play around with, and it's got some fancy blinking lights. I don't think you'll see it on that side, if I just quickly come around to here, there you go. It's got some blinking lights all over it, and it does look good. So if I just come around to here so you can get a better view of the ship, there we are. I am once again using the Atlantis Skybox, in case you're wondering why the background is so blue. But I'm going to press F10, and it's time to find the IPV Mark III. There is also a Mark II, which is a slightly different. I don't think I can spawn this in because of block limits. Yes, this is the Mark II. It's a looks like a slightly longer ship. It's much more streamlined compared to this one, which is a little bit more blobby in its design with little pokey parts at the top and at the bottom. But as I was doing, the IPV Mark III weighs in at 4,836 large blocks. It uses part of the style DLC pack, it uses a few mods, although two of them are scripts, so you don't have to worry about them, and there is the upgradable thrusters. So let's start by going around the outside, then we'll go around the inside, have a little fly around, and maybe crash this into the green starting station. So at the very front, we have got our ramming spike, or the antenna if you want to use it like that. And above that, we got two rocket launchers, which is our main controllable weapon. Two spotlights and a camera just hidden right there, so you can view everywhere in the dark. And slightly below there, we can see a Gatling turret, just to help you defend yourself from below. Now, this has been encased with sort of like a sheltered part, where we've got little rims going all the way around, with some lovely blue lights inside it. We've got some little interior lights along there, and some interior corner lights on the side. We then have some black carbon fibre rounded blocks, which will then take us around the side, like that. And we've got two rotor heads there, just for a bit of extra decoration. Now over here, I did miss out. There is some little bit of block work going here, but these have got blocks missing inside it, which is quite nice, actually. It helps it from being a flat, long, straight part. Just adds a little bit of flavour when you're looking at it. Like I'm going around the side. As we move along the side of the ship, we've got two modded ion thrusters just sitting inside there. I believe I have showcased these on my channel somewhere, the upgradable thrusters. Can't remember. But below them, we've got some auction farms and some rotor heads on top. Just in front of them, overdue here, we've got some windows where you can just sort of peer inside the ship where there is a large ion upgradable thruster hidden inside. Just above that, some more oxygen farms, just so you don't run out of oxygen. And then, as we come across the side, like I showed earlier, we've got the blue blinking lights going along some interior walls with some half slope blocks, just covering up for a nice little feature. It's a nice, very simple feature, actually, just to break up the plain blockish look. Above that, we've got some blast door edges just going along to the top, but I'll come back to that later. And then coming back down here, we can sort of see a, another interior block right there, and that'll just lead behind to that upgradable ion thruster. Coming around near the actual bridge of the ship, we've got a hangar door. It's a fairly sizey hangar, actually, so you can fit in a reasonably sized ship as long as it can get out of these doors. We have a camera above there to make sure you know what's coming in and out and we once again have some more blinking blue lights and just two fully active blue lights on the side coming slightly above that we once again have the carbon fiber rounded blocks interior pillars even more rounded blocks more interior pillars coming off an interior wall with a red blinking light and a advanced rotor head with some corner windows to create this little feature 
quite nice actually. It's really nice to be able to see how people decorate their ships using the vanilla blocks as everyone always has a different idea of how to combine stuff together to make stuff great and this is a perfect example of that. To the left of that we got our main entrance into the ship where it says welcome back to the IPV Mark III. So there is a nice little screen and they do have screens going all the way around this ship so you can never get lost. If I was just to uh, drop down and just come below the hangar doors, we've got some turrets underneath there. Then just under here, we've got some more modded thrusters, some wheels attached onto some interior pillars, more modded thrusters, advanced rotor heads. And coming around to here, we've got some little stripe of blue on here with some more advanced rotor heads sticking across the side. Ion thrusters from the mod pack, and just some nice block work there coming all the way around the side. As we move up, we can see just around the back there some wheels with some more interior pillars and a rotor head on top. We then have coming up to here a little rounded block feature with another rotor head there. We've got some more blue blocks just in the middle. Then we come to our bridge, which is this thing right here. We've got two passenger seats at the very front there. And right behind it, just around behind here, you'll have your actual flying cockpit with a little display screen which has been attached via a rotor. But I'll come back to that once I go around the interior. And then coming around all the way to the very back of the ship, we have got a little thruster hole for our hydrogen thruster. There is the wheels with the interior pillars coming across it. Just below that we've got some more blinking red lights with a interior camera. And then slightly below there, not too much else to talk about, it's just a lovely ship design which been put together and a little cage here. If you want to put someone in here and get them roasted by those thrusters, you can do. So now let's just go around the top, then we'll go underneath and it's time to go inside. Although I did forget about this bit, above that other thruster hole there, we got a much more extended round little thruster pod where we have a modded thruster. Coming around the side, we got some more blinking blue lights and then above that, We've just got some more block work there with some blue going through the middle. Over here and past these modded thrusters, we've got some blast door edges and then these are diamond shaped blocks which will then lead around to the main bridge. Quite nicely done actually, like that. Then coming up and above the bridge, more blast door blocks. Past where I am, past some more blast door parts. We come to this little feature right here which is a tiddly little antenna on a little block work part and you could make this turn around if you want to just set it to turn at a slow speed and it'll be there as a little decorative piece. In front of that another Gatling turret, some more blast door parts, a pit of death to kick people into which also contains an atmospheric thruster, another turret, we can see the auction farms there, a connection point which has been surrounded by some blast door edges, blast door blocks with some red blinking lights. In front of that, two more Gatling turrets, and in front of that is this little weird feature right here, which is green and orange blocks with some green and orange lights, two white lights, and a blue spotlight. Yeah, it just sits there. It doesn't really do anything. It's just there for decoration, which is quite nice. It's always nice to see little parts like that. And then last but not least, it's time to come underneath the ship, so past this Gatling turret. We then see the other end of our pit of death, which contains a hydrogen thruster. We got some steps and we got some windows going across past these ion thrusters. We move across, do some nice block work. They haven't skipped out with the bottom decorations. Just look at this. It actually looks really good. In fact, this could be passed for the top of the ship. But two rocket turrets will be there. We've got another atmospheric thruster, some more auction farms, gatling turrets, and below this bit. Below the bridge, in fact, we've got another connector for you to connect up to. Then we come past it where we've got some more thrusters, rotor heads and wheels. But I do believe I have covered this part and that is about it. We do have a landing gear right here because we can go on planets. And that is how we're going to connect ourselves down nice and safe. And that just about covers the outside of the interplanetary vessel Mark III. It's a lovely design. It's got quite a lot going on with it for using the default vanilla blocks. Although it does use the modded thrusters, you could easily just switch them out for the vanilla thrusters, but you would lose a lot of the fancy looks those thrusters do have. So now it's time to take control of my character and go inside the ship. So dropping down and coming around, 
we've got to compare this little decorative part right here to this. So we've got our sign telling us that we are welcome to the ship. Opening up the door, there is no automatic thing on this door, it only works on the other doors in this ship. But we do have an interior turret there to make sure we cannot go in there if we're not wanted. So you could quite easily just dash through here and you will not be hit. So where do we go? In fact, I'll go around these doors first. So past the interior turret, we've of course got an automatic door coming through here. And then we've got a survival kit to respawn on. Turning around, we've got some buttons on this panel, which are generally to control the lights at the air vents. We have a sign here saying gravity room, medical room and cryo chambers. So dropping down past this ladder, we then have the gravity room in front of us. We've got two programmable blocks with a nice screen telling us what's going on with them. So there is the ship layout and there is the LCD automation script. We have a refinery right behind us and on top of that a ladder to climb up. We can open up this doorway where we have our medical bay just to change our outfit or heal ourselves on. An LCD screen showing us the events, auction farms and auction tanks. Coming back through here and through this door, we've got our cryopods with a nice blue glowing light. And another LCD screen there showing us the energy status and our cargo status. Moving around and coming through here, we come to our gravity area, where it is simply a gravity generator just sitting there in a single room with a jump drive on top. Through here, we've got a lovely warning sign that is telling us there is no oxygen in that area and to please close your helmet. So opening up this door and coming through, let's just close that up. We are now in the hangar. So this is the size of our hangar. We can fit a reasonably sized ship in here and yeah. It's just a nice little hangar. Interior turrets there to make sure no one unwanted has come inside. And we've got a button panel here, which we can press. I only need to worry about the fourth button on this one, so it opens up the doors. We have a connector in the dead center, surrounded by some blast door blocks, just to make sure if you did a hard landing, you're not going to cause any problems with the air tightness on this ship. So that about covers that part. Just coming through here, and then just closing them up. We can walk around to the bridge. So walking all the way through past the gravity generator, up the ladder, there we go. And then we need to come around this side I believe. Yes, we've got to come around here and up the steps, pass through here. We then have some more automatic doors, timer blocks which are controlling the doors. We've got a little cargo container part here which contains a lot of uranium, some tools, some ammunition, some guns. Walking up these steps will take us to the bridge as stated by this sign. So up here, through this door, past the gyroscope, we then come to the bridge. Two passenger seats which sit at the very front, who can look out at the front of the ship. And behind that we've got two control seats and our main flight seat. The control seats do have controls over the rocket turrets, which is fantastic. So your passengers can just hop into this and go left for rockets, right for Gatlings. We've got some LCD screens which are telling us everything going on with our ship and then our power and hydrogen on this one. We have a little feature here which is showing us all different types of things and the buttons that we can press from the flight seat. So we can simply sit here and read them off. So speaking of stuff we can do with the ship, number one is to turn the atmospheric thrusters on and off, the ion thrusters on and off, Hydrogen thrusters on and off. Four and five are to adjust the distance of the jump drive. So if you want to whack it all the way up, you can do. Number six is to activate the uh, jump drives. And then number seven for the rockets at the front. Number eight is the emergency protocol. So if we're in combat and we're at risk of taking damage, we press that and it will close up all the hangar doors on the ship and we'll become nice and safe. So there's that, you sort of lock your passengers in a risky zone, but well, as long as you don't die, that's the main part. Then we can just undo that and it'll all open up, and you can see if the passengers are still alive. Number one on the second tab is the view left, view front, view right, view tail, view the landing camera. Number six is a spotlight which controls only the spotlight at the bottom where your landing gear is. So six will just make it easier for you to view down. Number seven is to lock your landing gear, and number nine is another jump drive. And that about covers it. So going for a quick thruster test, moving forwards, in fact turning all them on. Let's go forwards. 
a lot of speed. This thing is big and it has one hell of a lot of acceleration. But that would be because of the upgradable part of the whole thruster mod. Moving backwards, not as fast, but still very good for a large ship. Going left and going right is very responsive and very fast. Going down, quite slow. Going up, very fast. There we are. So you've got to be careful if you need to slow down if you actually lent on your spacebar for too long. And then wiggling my mouse around, we've got one hell of a lot of weight on here. It could be a good idea to slap some more gyroscopes on this, but it ultimately does fit the size of the ship. You don't want a very responsive cruiser going through space, otherwise that just ruins the actual feel of the ship. Or at least that's what I think. So the only thing I can think of to do now is to ram the green starting station. So here is our camera, we're just going to turn it all the way around. We're going to start reversing, and then we're going to go straight into the main body of that, where those cargo containers are sitting. Coming out of this, let's go first person or third person. I think third person will work better. Let's just tilt ourselves up a little bit. Here we go. Going forwards, straight into this base. And in we go. It's a very resilient ship. It's just plowing straight through it. And there we go. We have now stopped. Let's just try and get the ship away from the base. I think I've lost all my rear thrust. So I will have to try and tilt myself and rely on the downward thrust to get myself out. Yes, as for the damage done there, we just went straight through that building and continued on until we got to this bit where we lost all our momentum, which is very good. In fact, I can just hold space and I'm sure this will work. The game does not like this, but we are going to get free. There we are. And now we have become free. We haven't lost too much, in fact. For a fully frontal ram, not too much damage has been done. But the actual base itself, if I just come over to here. Yeah, it's quite a lot of damage. Check the ship over here. Yeah, like I said, we lost a lot of the thrusters. We are still generally good to go, though, because the main function of the ship is at the rear of the ship. So the hangars, the actual bridge, and where your living quarters are and all that are perfectly safe. So it'll be in the description below if you wish to download and play around with this self. Perhaps you want to take some inspiration from some of the parts on this ship. So it's always useful just to have a lot of variety of blueprints that you can spawn in and take a gander at every now and again. So thank you all for watching, and I'll be back with another video somewhat soon. Bye bye.